Hello, my friend, August Falcha. Hello and welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Are you a multi-passionate creator? Have you been told throughout your life or especially online, maybe from your friends, your family, that you should pick one thing and really go deep and let the other things go because you're splattering your attention and your focus is all over the place and you're never really gonna get anywhere and on and on and on. Have you heard those things? I have too. Well, if you have, today's video is especially for you. We'll be looking at some early Irish mythology that says exactly the opposite. So I'm delighted to be with you today. My name is Kate, Kate Chadbourne, and I am a professor of Irish language and Irish folklore. And I'm also, like you, a multi-passionate creator and a little bit tired of being told to pick a lane. <laughs> so today I'm looking at some early Irish tales that have to do with not picking a lane. So we know about the gods and goddesses of Ireland from a few key sources. One of them is a tale called the Second Battle of Moitura. And in that story, we meet the gods and goddesses of early Ireland. And here's news for you. Almost none of them is a single focused god or goddess entity. They almost all of them have more than one function. So great scholars have called the early Irish gods and goddesses multifunctional. So one example of this uh, is the, the goddess Bridget or Bridge, uh, who we know of from this tale and from other sources. Uh, certainly from a glossary from the 10th century called the Sanas Chormek, in which she's described as the goddess of smithwork, meaning um, making iron implements in the smithy, right? Smithwork, healing, and poetry. She's also very much associated with cattle, with fire, and with fertility. So she covers a broad range and she is actually, she gives her name to Britain, <laughs> uh, to all kinds of, to different tribes, the Brigantes, uh, to rivers, to uh, all kinds of places. She is immortalized through the landscape, probably because she was not single functional. Now, the other major uh, standard bearer for us in this is the god called Luke. Luke. Luke, we find out about in a number of, of tales, but especially in that tale, the battle, the second battle of Moitura. And I want to actually read out a little bit of this tale for you so that you'll, you'll meet this, this young kingly man who shows up at the gates of Tara, where they're, ha they're holding a, a meeting to talk about the threat that they're under. So the, the Tuahati Danan, who are the sort of the gods and goddesses of early Ireland are under threat from a group of kind of monstrous people called the Favorians, and they're not sure what to do. And in their hour of need, there's a knock on the door. And this young man, Luke, this beautiful young man, knocks on the door and says to the, the doorkeeper, can I come in? And the doorkeeper says, well, what art do you practice? No one ever enters Tara without an art. And Luke says, I am a builder. And the doorkeeper says, no, nope, uh, we've got builders. I am a smith. We've got smiths. I am a champion. All set there. I am a harper. Yes, we've got harpers. I am a warrior. Yes, all set there. We've got warriors. I am a poet and historian. All set there too. I am a sorcerer. Yep, we don't need you. Uh, I am a physician. Got that covered. I am a cupbearer. All set there, I'm a brazier, someone who works with fine metals. Yeah, we've got that too. So then Lug says, ask the king whether he has one man who possesses all these arts. If he, if he has, I will not be able to enter Tara. So a message is given uh, and he's given some, a message is given to the, to the king and Lug is still on the outside, but he's given a little test. He sent out a chessboard, Fichel, which we think is basically early Irish chess. The, the word Fichel means wood wisdom. And he just uh, cleans house. He does so well. Then they let him in and they ask him to do feats of, 
of strength. Uh, they, they put him up against Oma, their, their great strong man, and he does amazing feats of strength. And finally, after he has really bested Ogma, he's given a harp and he plays the harp. And at that point, Nuadu, who's the standing king, this is what he thinks. Then Nuadu, when he had seen the warrior's many powers, considered whether he could release them from the, bo from the bondage they suffered at the hands of the Vavora. So they held a council concerning the warrior and the decision which Nuadu reached was to exchange seats with the warrior. So Savaldanach, I'll explain in a minute, went to the king's seat and the king arose before him until 13 days had passed and then he became the king. So he is called the Savaldanach, which means the many gifted one, the many gifted one. And in that moment, many gifts were necessary. One person who was able to embody all of those different strengths and arts was the key actually and and Luke is the one who is able to defeat the Favorians and create a safe Ireland for the Tuathidanan so i love that story and i love thinking about being savaldanach many gifted and knowing that having those many gifts are never a liability so I wanted to say in my own life, this is, it used to be a real trouble to me when I was younger, especially when I was, I was uh, studying for my PhD, people would say to me, yeah, Kate, but what are you really? Are you an artist, musician, or are you uh, a scholar? You've got to pick, you can't be both. And it really tormented me for such a long time. And I mean, it goes even deeper because I am a musician and a singer, but I'm also a storyteller and a writer and a poet and a composer. And here's the thing, I let my art carry me where it wants to bring me. I follow that inspiration. And I guess I wanted to make this video today to tell you that you don't have to choose. Here we have these great examples from early Ireland, but I will say in my own life, and maybe it takes to middle age to help you know this, but you will see in time that all the arts that you have practicing and learning fit together. You will find out that there is a reason. You're, what you're probably doing and, and what I do and, and have done is follow the energy of eagerness. I believe with all my heart that the energy of eagerness is always right. There's something truthful about it and there's something mysterious about it because you don't always know where it's carrying you. You don't actually know why you're learning this or, or why you're practicing this or why you're so, you're just so bound up with this idea or this art, but you will keep on going and you will. So those arts will fit together in time. Everything you practice and learn will make you more not less. Do not apologize if you are multi-passionate. Know that these things are making you more. Yes, it's beautiful when, when somebody has that one pronged focus and they can just say, I'm a watercolorist. That's it. That's what I do. Fantastic. But if you're not wired that way, and I'm definitely not <laughs> wired that way, uh, don't be bullied. Stand up straight. Know that the overarching identification is artist or creator, whatever word you like. And people are necessarily going to pursue that according to their own particular makeup, what kind of an artist they are. If your art is multi-pronged, that's what you're going to be doing. You know, a lot of, a lot of the way that I practice my art is performances that I give at local libraries. And those, those performances draw on my storytelling, they draw on my poetry, they draw on my musicianship and singing, uh, they draw on my scholarship. All of it comes together. And I know that will be the case for you. So finally, I'll just say that 
allowing for and saying a joyful and a proud yes to your multi-passionate nature uh, is just a way of saying, I'm open to inspiration, however it comes to me. And I'm open to inspiration, however it flows through me and back into the world. And that can only be a good thing. So I hope that's encouraging to you. I'd love to hear if you would, if you feel uh, called to share, what are the arts you practice? Tell us in the comments, make a list and be expansive and be inclusive because it feels good to realize what you're doing, where you've put your energy. Here we all are on planet earth. We have this time. Again, I want to enjoy being who I am and who I am is multi-passionate. And I think that a lot of you are too. So make a list, share with us all of that. I would love to celebrate that in you. And second, if you would rather tell us how you have handled some of this advice or even uh, stern warnings or, or sometimes even a little bit of bullying, maybe with your best interest at heart, but maybe not. How have you handled this? What have you said or what have you told yourself that could be helpful to all of us um, in the family of creators? I'd love to hear. And thank you again. I'm really having a lovely time with you. I love your comments. I love your presence here. Uh, if you haven't um, subscribed, please do. Please join us. I'd love to have you. And always please like the video because honestly, that gives me so much encouragement. So thank you as ever for watching and taking this in and for being here. And I'm wishing you a week of standing up straight as a creator, feeling the pride of your accomplishments, feeling the pride of who you are. You deserve it. I'll see you next week. Bye for now.